So it's been a couple of weeks since I made a video for reasons that I think many of you understand. Um, I want to talk about the Bibi Stockholm, about what's currently going on with it, and also about the aspect of it that I think has been completely overlooked in the mainstream media. So first of all, quick update. It was supposed to house 500 asylum seekers. So far, they've managed to get it up to about 18 and they've since had to empty it completely. There's no one on it now because there was an outbreak of Legionella um, on board. The Fire Brigade Union describe it as a potential death trap. There's big questions hanging over whether it, it can ever be used and certainly whether it can ever be used to house that many people. Um, the idea that it's going to save us, the nation, money is pretty complex and confusing, right? They're saying that full, it would cost about £100 per person per night, which doesn't sound like they're getting very good value out of it, does it? Because they're talking about having two or three people in each room. And if I go and stay on a boat and I'm paying two or £300 per room for absolutely basic facilities, I have to say, I'd consider myself to be being fairly aggressively ripped off. Secondly, the alternative is to house those people in hotels around the UK and that just does not cost £100 per person per night. In fact, very much less than that. And furthermore, hotels around the UK are really struggling because the hospitality industry has been hit really, really hard by the after effects of the pandemic, the after effects of Brexit and the ongoing effects of the cost of greed crisis and the inflation that is pushing people into further and further poverty and making it harder and harder to take holidays. Now, all of this is almost a non-subject because the reality is that we should not have to pay to house asylum seekers for any significant length of time. What we should be doing is front loading the system so that when people arrive, they can access good quality legal support. They can lodge their claims quickly and effectively and thoroughly, and they can then have those claims quickly and thoroughly assessed by the Home Office. We know that the vast majority of asylum seekers do end up being granted asylum, so they will then be able to work, be able to get jobs. And when I've worked with asylum seekers, one thing they all have in common is that they are really keen to support themselves and to start rebuilding their lives. They don't want to spend years sat in below standard government accommodation, living from, you know, hand to mouth on meagre benefits um, and, you know, being treated poorly and all this kind of stuff. That's the last thing they want. But here's the thing that you probably don't know. Even if the Bibby Stockholm was saving money, and even if we accepted this ridiculous notion that the only way to look after asylum seekers is to put them into accommodation for months and months and months and months and months while we fail to process their claims, in some cases years and even decades, it doesn't even work because the cost of housing asylum seekers comes out of the UK's international aid budget. Yeah. That money doesn't go back into the UK economy. It's not unfair on British people if we spend money housing asylum seekers. It's actually unfair on people in the developing world who will subsequently receive less aid. Now, we know that Rishi Sunak cut the UK aid budget when he was Chancellor in 2020 from 0.7% of our gross national income to 0.5%. That took about £4 billion out of it, went uh, down very dramatically. Um, and at that time, the amount being spent housing asylum seekers was going up and it's gone up very, very dramatically to the point where by 2022, in fact, about a third of the UK aid budget is now spent in the UK, housing asylum seekers in the UK. And that means that over that same period of time, the amount of money that we're spending, for example, on the continent of Africa in aid has roughly halved. Um, and that's at a time when, you know, that continent is also being affected by the pandemic, is also being affected by ongoing climate breakdown and is very much at the forefront of all of those things. So even if we accepted that it was a money saving exercise, which it clearly, clearly is not, it doesn't even save us money. What it does is it rips money away from those around the world who need it the very, very most. And in fact, as a result of that, those people are more likely to end up in conflict and more likely to themselves end up becoming refugees. It is absolutely Tory hypocrisy 101. It's an absolute case study in how to do things badly, make things worse, compound problems, not solve anything and build policies that are not based on doing things well or efficiently or even making things better for people in the UK, but are simply built on racism, ignorance and hatred. And it needs to end. See you next week. Increasingly, the mainstream media is terrible at informing the public of what is really going on. 
I'm only able to make these videos because people are generous enough to sponsor me making them and if you're able to be a part of that I would hugely appreciate it. It can cost as little as one dollar a month and you'll get loads of fun bonus content and lots of extras from me and my undying gratitude. I also massively appreciate it if you're able to like, share these videos and let people out there know what's going on.